Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm CJ Roberts, Chair of the Arts Council of Hillsborough County, and it is Tuesday, October 27th, 2020, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Martine, do we have a quorum? Um, I think I need to do a roll call vote um, and check on everyone before I answer that question. So, Paul Berg. Here. Aaron Butler. Santiago. Here. Clay. Here. Lindsay. Here. D. Here. Tyler. Here. Robin. Megan. Megan. Oh, here. Sorry. Uh, Sandra. Here. CJ. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Sandra. Here. Bob Terry. Georgia Vague. Here. Yes, we have a quorum. Wonderful. Uh, moving on to public comment. Any members from the public with us today wish to make a comment? No one communicated with the Arts Council the desire to make public comment at this meeting. Okay, next item on the agenda, approval of the minutes from the September 22nd, 2020 board meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. A second? I'll a second. second. Oh, just a second. Was that Santiago? Did you make that motion? And yes. who seconded? Who I think seconded? two of us did it at the same time. Um, but I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. And Martine, I guess you have to call the roll, don't you? I do. Uh, Paul? Yes. Aaron? Santiago? Yes. Clay? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. E? Here. Tyler. Martine. Yes. Who's that? That's Sandra Sroka on the phone. Okay. Very good, Sandra. Uh, so, uh, Dee, did you say yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, Robin. Tyler. Present. Are you voting yes, Tyler? Yes, I'm, yeah, yes, okay. I'm voting yes. Very good. Megan? Yes. Andra? Yes. CJ? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. And Eliza? Yes. Georgia Bayhew? Yes. And I think Theron has joined us. Theron, are you there? Yes, I am. So would you like to vote on the acceptance of the board minutes? Yes, please. Okay, yes. Okay, that's, uh, we have uh, passed pass. unanimously. All right. So, so, sorry, all that's a little clunky, but the good news is we only, I think, have two more action items. We only have to do that two more times. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce our two new board members, Dee Hood and Tyler O'Dell. Welcome. It's great to have you both with us. And, and if I could ask, maybe starting with Dee, uh, just quickly introduce yourself and, uh, and, and tell us what drew you to the mission of the Arts Council. Um, hi, I'm happy to be with you guys. I'm Dee Hood. And... Um, 
Well, anything that promotes the arts in our community is something that's near and dear to my heart. Okay. And Tyler. Hi, my name is J. Tyler Odell. I'm a veteran and current financial analyst for the University of South Florida, as well as an independent mental health researcher. Uh, I've been drawn to the arts uh, my entire life. Throughout all of my school, I've been involved with it. And now that I am a professional, I would like to continue to be involved with it. Awesome. Well, welcome to you both. And we look forward to working with you in the months and years ahead. Hey, uh, I'm going to ask you to tell the story you told me about being the recipient of an Arts Council individual artist grant back when and the effect it had on your career. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was telling Martine that years and years and years ago, I was awarded a, um, a grant from the Arts Council which enabled me to buy an old Amiga com computer, which um, was the hot thing at the time for artists. And um, so having been able to purchase that and learning, um, you know, some stuff on there, I was able to use that knowledge to get my first job at Ringling um, teaching. So they were, they were really looking for somebody that had some computer experience and I could say, well, I know a little bit about it now. So I, I've always been very grateful that um, I had that opportunity. That's awesome, that's awesome. All right, next up, I'd like to introduce Aaron uh, Saladino, who's supervisor K through 12 arts education with the Hillsborough County School District. And she is going to be our education liaison. And Aaron, would you just give us a, a quick update on what's going on with arts education in the district? Sure, um, first, I, I apologize for not being able to make it to the last meeting. Um, it's been just super crazy nutsy um, uh, at the, the, the district level. Um, and I wanted to thank Martine for kind of reading off my my agenda that I had originally planned um, during the last meeting. Um, and not a lot has changed um, as far as uh, our expectations um, moving forward with um, our programs. Um, just a little bit of clarification because I know that um, everybody here probably watches the news and reads newspapers and and um, is on the internet and and may have questions when it comes to um, our arts programs um, in the district. And um, just a little bit of clarification uh, in that um, none of our art programs are going away. Um, so all of the art programs that we currently have established in, into the district, um, especially in our middle school and our high school levels are staying put. Um, it is no mystery that those programs are based on um, enrollment and interest. And we have many schools where our students are, are really interested in, in staying in those programs. So those are staying healthy. Um, as far as elementary goes, um, what we're doing right now is we're just making sure that um, all of our, our um, art educators are being kind of shifted and moved around to where they are going to be um, most effective um, and making sure that we have more equity um, uh, amongst all of our elementary schools. So we have no um, news or, and no, our programs are going away. Um, uh, so I just want to make sure that we I clarified that um, with you all since you all kind of, uh, you know, have a vested interest in our programs. Um, as far as event updates, we plan on moving forward with our, our same calendar that we've had in the past um, uh, with our business or our, our community partners um, and with our uh, school art program um, uh, events, um, you know, like their art shows, which they typically have at the end of the year. Um, uh, the best thing that we ask for our community partners is that they have flexibility and grace. And while we are moving forward with continuing to have events, some of those events may end up being virtual or um, hybrid receptions where we have the winners in person, but everything else is, is virtual. Uh, but we still plan on moving forward with, with Tampa Museum of Art, um, uh, UT with Scholastic. I have a meeting with about Scholastic uh, tomorrow. Um, and I just met with HCC. Um, and so we are um, uh, planning on moving ahead and just you know, doing the best that we can with being flexible. Um, and then uh, as far as our artists in the schools programs, um, until we can, uh, um, have people come in person um, to our schools because we want to make sure that we are, um, are thoughtful about that. Um, we are working uh, on having working with artists um, in the community to have virtual experiences with schools. 
Um, so they are kind of, um, you know, televised in, um, whether it's through webinar or whether it is through interactive, um, you know, like Zoom sessions. Um, but uh, we don't plan on that stopping either. So we are like, I'm sure everybody else in the world right now is we're just trying to be as, as adaptive as, as possible. Great, great. Okay. Th thank you, Aaron. That's that's all good news, and we are really happy to have you serving as a liaison here. And our challenge to you is, as you see opportunities for us to maximize our relevance to the district, please let us know uh, because that's very important to us uh, as we go forward. Hello, um, thanks. Next up, I want to introduce Jennifer and Barry from Shapino Lee Advertising and Branding, and they're going to walk us through our new website, which I had a little bit of a sneak peek of earlier, and I think you're going to like what you see. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Rule. I'm with Shafino Lee, and um, I'm the Director of Brand Strategy and VP of Client Services, and I've had the wonderful privilege of working with the Arts Council, Martine and Eileen, and we've just had a wonderful experience because a lot of our folks are artists as well um, within the advertising community, so we're excited to show you um, the strategy as well as the outcome of the creative and the website. All right. And I'm Barry Clip. I'm the creative director in Shafino Lee. Um, I worked hand in hand with the team to, to help um, facilitate um, and, and, and take the strategy and turn it into the visual um, identity system that you'll see through this presentation. So we were super excited about it. And uh, I hope you guys will be as well. Can everybody see the screen? Maybe a thumbs up. Yep. All right. So as um, Martine and Eileen know that before we ever start any creative, we are very much rooted in our strategy, uh, which really is the blueprint for any brand. Um, it's kind of like building a house. You have to have the plans and the blueprint, and then you can add all the, the paint and the decor and the fun stuff. So um, we worked really strongly and closely with the team at the Arts Council um, to come up with this strategy, which really helped um, Barry and his team create some amazing work. So we'll just go ahead and dive in. Um, so we always start with our objective. You know, what did we really want to accomplish is we wanted to create more brand awareness of the Arts Council and its dedication to connecting arts and culture to Hillsborough County citizens. Um, I've lived here a while, um, moved back from Chicago over 10 years ago and I hadn't I wasn't familiar with the Arts Council and I'm very rooted in the community have done work with different organizations so I think it was very important for us to really help create more awareness um, for your organization we also had some secondary objectives of course is um, uh, to ensure that every everyone in Hillsborough County has equitable access to arts and culture we wanted to build the diverse awareness of the diversity of our support and offerings to our communities. We wanted to communicate the scope of impact we have on the health and success um, of our county uh, by sharing some engaging stories and artist profiles, which you'll see on the website. And we wanted to diversify our messaging to increase, again, accessibility to all socioeconomic demographics. So um, with part of this brand audit we did in Discovery, we conducted several personal interviews with Martine and her team, and uh, as well as Lindsay Kimball, uh, Emery and Megan, um, Mariella Smith. So we really gained a lot of great and diverse insight into developing this. Um, and then we did some other analysis of best in class art councils around the country. And then of course, just we always assess what you've been currently doing um, so that we can improve on that. So, you know, this is for us kind of helpful in seeing what kind of shift we want to make. We felt that the Art Council in many ways has been kind of quiet and under the radar, so we want to change that and make, make the organization a more dynamic um, group here in the county. Um, we also wanted to go from maybe feeling a little dated with our look and feel of the brand to more progressive, modern, contemporary look. Um, we also wanted to go from feeling very institutional, um, which can happen a lot of times and even just within the name council, to a lot more humanistic, um, to create more emotion and feeling around what you do. 
um, again, a little bit going from under the radar to putting you on the map to so that people are aware of what you're doing and all the great things that come out of the council. Okay, so leading into our brand strategy, again, we always start with who we're targeting. Uh, primarily, as you know, we'd be targeting uh, practicing artists here on the left, smaller nonprofit businesses and local organizations. And then those are just some of the attributes um, of the folks. Uh, secondarily, we're going to you know, target community, residents, business owners, commissioners as well. And then tertiary audience is larger nonprofit organizations, universities, and all those folks. So, you know, we're always touching these audiences in different ways. Um, the brand should be the umbrella for all the audiences. And then when we get into more specific messaging, that's where we can really connect with each of those audiences. And we do that very well on the website, and Barry will take you through that soon. Um, some of our brand attributes um, that came out of, again, the discovery and learning is that we feel this organization is passionate, collaborative, creative, um, supportive, very engaged, resourceful, connected, um, empowering, accessible, and diverse. So those are some of the, the core attributes of our brand that we always want to keep in mind when we're putting out any kind of uh, messaging or marketing. And I won't read through all of these, but just a few I'll pull out. And these are, you know, direct quotes from some of our interviews um, is we need to find a way for people to have more access to the arts. There are barriers in place, education, status, socioeconomic. Um, you know, someone had said our main business objective for the website should be increasing the awareness of the grants we provide. Uh, this one, people don't understand who we are and what we offer. There's not enough awareness of the level of impact that the Arts, Can Arts Council has on the health of our community. So, and then finally, we are focused on accessibility. We want people to know what's here. So um, I think you'll see this brand is achieving that. Um, so then we came up with what we call a unique value proposition. What are you offering? So we believe the Arts Council is Hillsborough's central hub for providing equitable access to arts and culture through inclusive, innovative, and inspiring programs and offerings. This is what you do. Um, so that leads us to what is our brand promise then? We believe that we empower artists, individuals, and communities to enrich and share their creativity through vital arts and culture. And we very purposely picked words like enrich and share creativity and then vital is, is very important because we know it's vital to the health of the community. And then what are some of the reasons to believe that promise is you all know this is that um, the Arts Council is dedicated to creating assets, access to the arts to enrich the lives of residents um, through the Arts Council spending such as grants programs, events, our residents, especially the underserved, are given access to the arts. Uh, we provide essential support, support to artists, and thousands of individuals are connected through events made possible through the Arts Council funds. So all kinds of reasons to believe and support to that brand promise. And then ultimately, we came up with just the essence, what we call the brand essence, and that is simply usually one statement. It's not necessarily a tagline, but we actually kind of, uh, it was the catalyst for what you're going to see as, as really the line and, and some of the work in the, in the website is igniting art and culture for all. And we really feel it has a lot of energy. We're igniting that in individually and in groups and you know, throughout our community. So that's our essence. And then I think that's that's uh, mainly the core strategy. So as you look at the work, you can reflect back at kind of what I just went through as, as the promise and then that essence of igniting arts and culture for all. And Barry is going to now show you kind of you know, how that evolved into the creative logo, first and foremost, um, and then our website. Yeah, it'll just take me a second to pull up the document. So, I mean, from a creative standpoint, um, you know, we had a lot of fertile ground. Um, you know, the arts in general are just, it's just a great opportunity to um, kind of build something really impactful and to really, um, you know, do a lot of uh, great creative work. And with these, with this uh, foundational brand strategy, um, really myself and the team, um, you know, went full bore into developing um, all the brand strategy or the um, brand elements. And I'll walk you through 
those pieces. And I'll go really high level because this is a, um, a brand guideline, so I won't go into the nuance of every piece of it, but I still want to, it, this is really where rubber meets the road and how we um, help define brands. And you'll see not only um, the pieces that we created here, um, but how it implements into the website. Let me just do this real quick. Everybody good? You see it? Cool. Um, and you've heard all this. This is kind of the building blocks of, of what this is. This document actually helps um, everybody on the team from, from an internal and external standpoint understand what the brand is and how to utilize it. I'm, I'm sure you've heard of seen a brand standard before, but this is just a high level. Um, I'll walk you through and how we got here. Um, we've, we've heard all this. This is part of the brand strategy, what we're trying to do here, um, you know, challenge seekers, problem solvers, relate to people who have been there, create an impact on um, communities feel. Um, all these things are, are, are why we create the things that we do and we create the um, brand marks and elements. And we go right here. This is, um, you know, our new um, logo and brand mark with our word mark. And this is, uh, you know, a really uh, delineative way to show, you know, what your brand is really quickly and to start to build a visual consistency across the board. We, we went outside of the box here because we're artists. I mean, we, we support artists and we support the arts. So our, our brand identity has to echo that. Um, I always say, like, we don't always get a chance to communicate to there. So if all we see is the logo, we want to make sure that we personify what we are. And and we really felt like um, the team and, and this really personifies who you guys are and, and who you can be really quickly. And then we even started to go further down the path. Um, these are just some um, kind of elements and um, variations that we see the, the brand line out. Simple boring stuff, how not to use the logo, how to use it. Um, uh, our typeset. These are these are things that we wanted to build, um, you know, flexibility within because there are so many avenues for us to um, communicate in. But we wanted a, a visual identity system that would help um, support those ideas. This is just a type hierarchy. Color was a huge thing for us, and, and, and we know for all artists, we wanted to give a palette that was robust and flexible, um, but at the same time, very unique and um, delineative of, of the arts. And this is where we sat with it. And not only did we go here as we use cornflower as our, um, our primary color, we, we see these variations. We have, you know, for us, it was about those targets and how we um, um, spoke to them and how we wanted to message them. So not only did we want to use, utilize uh, messaging within the website, we like this idea of this kind of um, color combination here um, for each kind of target audience, education and organizations in the slime and aqua, um, artists and enthusiasts in the cornflower and tiger. And then, and then collectors in this magenta and amber. Like I said before, this builds that really visual consistency. People start to recognize where they are in spaces and what kind of communications are um, coming to them as they're um, as they're absorbing pieces of um, collateral or on the website. It's just a really fun, interesting way to to help um, the arts council really get people where they're going because that's what we found a lot of times with the website. It, the, all the information was there; it just wasn't collected exactly in the right way, or there was a little bit more um, um, barriers. There was a few barriers in the way of people getting to what they actually needed. And now you start to see kind of how the brand starts to shift, um, you know, and how the brand mark turns into this amazing pattern used in, in the, these colors used throughout. You can either have this um, really nice tight pattern mark or you could have this super graphic that works in, in two different ways. Um, this is what we call proof of concept. How does this translate itself into real life working, um, you know, um, communicate pieces of communication. We have a business card here, we have a folder and we have a, a letterhead, just some ways that you start to see it translating out and in, in the brand really living in the world and how it can live in the world too. Another nice piece of collateral. Um, the business card, you have three different options here. It gives people variations. You know, why, we're, we're all artists and we want to give people flexibility. We want them to be able to put their own fingerprint on things, even if you're working within a brand system an email template, just something really um, simple, but at the same time, you see where the brand extends and translates into something like that. Social graphics, um, you know, this, this is where everything is nowadays on the phone and in the mobile space. So we want people to be able to see something really quickly and identify what it is and who they're speaking to. And that's where we start to do with, um, with this brand system. 
And then uh, something simple like a poster, I think you can kind of see where this translation comes out um, and happens in real life. And your messaging is able to be catered towards those color forms and how we utilize the brand assets, which is another flexibility in this system that we built for you. And from here, I will jump to websites. And the final translation of said brand. Jennifer Barry, this is Santiago. That is beautiful, 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 beautiful. Oh my oh, God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's that's I mean, that that's what we want. Um, yeah, that's the the kind of uh, response that we were looking for. And honestly, we know we're, we're catering to catering to a lot of artists and we would be doing a disservice if we didn't put something artful. Out. But at the same time, all of this is, is a great is a really great communication system too and that's where like it's it's where all these things come together and we just feel um really strongly about this identity system and how it works and then now how you see it's translated if you come to the home page you, you get this right here you understand um you know where you need to be and where you need to go um if you're just kind of like viewing this and a lot of times before the website had a little bit of um a blockade of of that you were, you were looking for something but you couldn't find it sometimes so this is a way where we we thought this was a very um, important part and that's why it's sticky on the bottom here it stays here so you can move in and out of um, parts of the website very simply without being lost and and that sounds pretty obvious but you'd be surprised how many websites people are getting lost on um, you see these little moments of delight as we call them you see this like um, parallax kind of slide in here we've added these to a lot of these pieces um, just little animations, ways that get people excited. You know, we want people to subscribe. We want to start to um, get more people involved and, and we want to be able to communicate them on a regular basis. A simple little animated GIF over here to, you know, to pull your eye over and to really, um, and, you know, get your ask, make your ask a little bit stronger to subscribe to what we're doing. Um, you know, we've used a user experience all over this website to, to try to get people where they're going in the right places and to make sure that there's no, no barriers. That's really what we want to, to kind of um, outline here and uh, your calendar of events and every we feel really solidly if anybody comes to this homepage, they're able to um, get to the, the section they need or there's enough pertinent information that they're going to um, they're going to feel very solid about um, the council and what they're providing and, and not only saying it, but they're showing it. You're showing it through um, really clean user experience and design. And I think that's uh, that what any great brand is trying to do. You personify the things that you're doing, not just talk about it or message about it so yeah the site um, is, is organized um, you know I'll go move to the art lovers page but it, it really has this modular system that allows that consistency but each kind of page has its own you know look and feel about it and um, that's what makes it flexible but at the same time consistent and we're still a little bit in the post QC phase. So like if any of you ever see anything or you have, please let us know or let us know. But we, we are still like with any website, there's a period of time where you're looking at it, you're perfecting it. And that's the beauty of a website. You can do it instantly. So yes, exactly. And with, with the platforms that exist nowadays, um, yeah, they're, they're just super flexible. And, um, you know, this site is completely mobile responsive. So anytime people are on the go, which is we're knowing that's more and more of a thing, um, you know, a very much focus for brands. So we made sure that this is kind of a future proof kind of site for you. And, and it's built in a way that um, really allows you to kind of um, grow with the um, ever changing the developments and in, in web design and, and technology. So you're not limited. It's not like this site is, is done once it's uh, enters here. Um, another really just cool little element is like we have this big blocking with our headline, but it, the color blends into the button here. So it's another piece of visual consistency that anchors you to where you are on the page and what section you're in on um, on here. So just some some you know um, modules here, the calendar of events. We want to make sure everybody's aware of what's going on and whatnot and um, another piece of you know buying local art being able to get to the directory really quickly um, and being able to kind of see um, what's involved here the sliders are really intuitive these are these are swipes um, if you're on a phone um, but they're they're you're just kind of this really organic feeling um, 
um, interactions. And we wanted a lot of those to happen uh, throughout the website. And uh, we're kind of just scrolling through. We always too have opportunities to capture information um, as much as we, um, you know, uh, you know, do our best to put as much here. We know that we want to continue to um, reach out to different members and, and new members. So we want to give ourselves opportunity to capture things and capture information. So we know the kind of um, content people are responding with and, and whatnot. So it's going to allow you guys to to cater your messaging towards um, these individuals and, um, and and continue to have a dialogue. So when they come back to the site, they're they're going to feel like it's fresh and it's regularly updated. And this this site definitely allows. Um, everybody to do those things very simply and easy and and it's a constant evolution and which is a great thing to have from a web standpoint we're not locked into anything which was an, a very old way of, of web design i think the website looks great i love how the brand um is integrated throughout the site and user experience is super important to me and the first thing that i look at whenever i visit any website and i was really pleased with it Great. Lovely. Thanks. So this is just your nav bar, just, you know, some top line things that we know are important to people. So even if in, in the instance you're here a little bit, um, you're, you're not finding what you want, you jump to here. And these were um, um, definitely um, highlighted pieces that we know people were interested in. So we wanted to give direct line access to those things. I would just like to comment. I think the firm did an excellent job in integrating our new strategic plan into this. If you listen to the brand strategy, uh, the things about accessibility, the things that were most important in our strategic plan are beautifully integrated into the brand and I think into the website. I, I should add, we had our first meeting with the firm on Friday, March 13th, Friday the 13th, right before the whole world shut down. So this website was created, and brand and website were created in the midst the of pandemic. pandemic. That's true, yes. We, we do our best work under pressure, we always say, uh, but um, like, like it, like it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how it just breeds really great stuff. But I mean, honestly, um, it's been a pleasure working with the team, um, honestly, the, the feedback has been great. Uh, I think it was a, just an extremely collaborative environment and it just speaks volumes of, of um, the organization and, and everybody a part of it. Um, it, it was really great and everybody that touched this piece is super excited and super proud to be a part of it because we know this is like a legacy. This is, this is something that we can look back on and really feel proud. Um, so we were really happy to be able to step in and, and, and help out and, and support you guys with your goals. Great. I would just like to add that it's a beautiful advocate for the arts. I mean, to tie in what we've been talking about, about how it affects the economy, um, how it affects, you know, business and our community development. Wow. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank, yes, you. thank you for the opportunity. We, again, really enjoyed working on this. Hope to continue the partnership and help you now evolve even more and you know, help Eileen and Martine develop more great pieces of advertising marketing so that we can keep building that awareness. And this is Commissioner Smith. Um, I, I just want to say too, I um, have some experience with websites. I'm always got an eye out for uh, web design. And this is clearly a one-off, a custom, uh, uh, you, you know, made website just for us. It's not, um, it's it, right from the beginning. It's it, it's clear that it's not just slotting stuff into a template. And um, I also was struck, as Martine said, uh, with the expression of our um, our goals and our strategic plan that we developed in that um, retreat we had. Um, and I, I think it, you, it's job well done. You really are um, expressing and reaching out in ways that we we wanted to do with our art council and expressing that and making the website do that for us. I think it's it's functional. It's beautiful. I love the parallax um, features of those pieces. <laughs> As you know, the little little uh, moments of delight and um, the colors are um, very fresh and yet 
the font is fresh, but it's not trying too hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like yeah. really organic and it means it and it's authentic uh, to us. So um, I love it. Good. Well, thank, thank you so much. That, there's no better compliment than authenticity. I mean, we all strive for it. And uh, that was that was paramount to us. Every artist wants that, you know, to, to be them true, their, their true self. So like you said, it, we, we, we try to strike the balance on all those things. And I'm, I'm really happy to hear that um, it's, it's perceived and, and taken in so well. So it's great. I would like to add that the response from our constituents and grantees has been overwhelmingly enthusiastic. Oh, good. Great stuff. Any other questions, reactions, comments? Jennifer and Barry, obviously from, from the group, you, you've heard you guys hit it out of the park. Uh, this is an organization that needs and aspires to raise its profile within the community. And I think you've given us tools that uh, will give us a consistent look and feel uh, a brand like we've never had before. It's fresh, it's modern. So thank you so much for your good work. Thank you, you're so welcome. You're welcome, you. really appreciate it. it. Okay, next okay. next item. Um, uh, as I think all of you know, the governance ordinance, the governor's ordinance, allowing boards like ours to meet virtually expires on the 31st of this month. Uh, we don't anticipate, unless somebody knows something, I don't. We don't anticipate that being renewed. So we did survey our board members to determine who is willing uh, and slash uh, comfortable to meet in person. And we determined that uh, we don't have enough uh, for a quorum in person. You can still join us virtually, but we have to physically have a, a quorum uh, uh, meeting um, face to face. And so we're recommending for your consideration today that we cancel our November and December meetings. Maybe things will look a little better in January. The executive committee could certainly come together and, and meet if necessary. And uh, Martine will continue to send out financials and, and monthly highlights. Uh, historically, we have, we have often canceled the December meeting because it tends to get lost in the holidays. Um, but I throw that out for, for your consideration and discussion. How do you all feel about that? And January is going to be very important uh, because that's when we would be discussing the, uh, the new ordinance and, the, and, and pulling together under Hillsborough County government. Commissioner. Um, thanks. Um, how is our quorum defined? Um, and maybe Ms. Diggs could advise as to whether there is some policy change we can make to redefine a quorum um, in, uh, in person. Does it have to be 50% plus one or simple majority? Well, yes, uh, that, that's actually a, a good question and I will look into that, Commissioner. Um, at this point, the, um, I believe the ordinance and the bylaws define a quorum as 50% uh, plus one, so a majority, a simple majority, um, which uh, um, is similar to most boards. I believe it's also similar to uh, the uh, BOCC as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can certainly look into that to see if there um, is a possibility that uh, the quorum can be uh, redefined, but traditionally it does mean a majority. And if I could just have a follow up, I um, if, while you're looking into it, um, I wonder if there's any way, it, you know, like if we were able to change our bylaws and the ordinance to make a quorum be somewhat less, we might also consider um, saying having some policy that said. Um, you, you know, we couldn't take action without um, a majority present in one way or another, but um, the the quorum itself would be, the, you know, the physical quorum could be something less than 50%. I don't know how finely you can uh, thread that needle or, or, or what, but those would be the questions I have. Absolutely, Commissioner. I am going to um, consult with Mary Helen Ferris in our mm -hmm. office. Um, I, I know that she's uh, leading the charge along with um, several other um, folks in the county 
um, that are uh, trying to navigate these issues with other boards. Um, I'll check with her and um, I will certainly uh, get back uh, with my findings as soon as I find out anything. But I will say that traditionally, um, with respect to the Sunshine Law, there is no uh, official business that could be conducted by any board um, without a quorum physically present. Um, and um, it, it was uh, fortunate that the governor allowed uh, boards, uh, you know, in the interim to meet uh, during during this pandemic uh, virtually. Um, so, um, unfortunately, it seems that it is something that we are, um, you know, trying to. Uh, create some new policies and new protocols to adapt to. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. Charlotte, uh, I'm on a number of Sunshine boards and I understand, uh, I understand, I'm not an expert, that uh, the, the boards can meet as long as no official business is conducted, no official votes, no conversation about anything that could be voted on, on the, in the future, but they could be informational in purpose and they could be conducted virtually. Is that true? That is correct, um, Santiago. Um, that is um, the uh, position that I actually uh, just learned of a couple of days ago um, that our office has advised. Um, we are uh, advising that uh, there can be, um, for lack of a better term, informational sessions. Um, um, presented um, as long as the boards do not take any official action, which would be obviously a vote um, or an official position. So um, yes, Santiago, you're absolutely correct. That can occur. So if there is a situation with this board where we need to um, disseminate information uh, to the group and not in an email, uh, but we do need to have it in a public uh, meeting setting, uh, we absolutely can have uh, that occur. I have to I have two questions. Um, the Arts Council staff, um, are, is everyone still working from home? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, and would it make sense to have a poll that's maybe um, uh, asking what it would take for people to feel comfortable coming to a meeting in person? where people shared, um, you know, what needs to take place in order for for them to feel comfortable showing up for a meeting. Is that, is that directed at me or, or Martine? Yeah, everyone, could there be a poll created um, that's out to the board um, asking, um, you know, what it would, what it would take for, um, for those yes. who don't feel comfortable, what it would take for people to feel comfortable? Um, from a, of, of protection? Sure, from, from a legal perspective, yes. Um, that is something that you all can discuss. I, it's probably a great idea to discuss that now since um, you know the time is ticking with respect to uh, virtually. Um, it, but I would defer to Martine as to, um, to lead that discussion regarding um, what the needs of this board uh, would be, um, what the preferences are. Um, it looks like something was um, uh, sent out to you all earlier, but perhaps there needs to be uh, more of an in-depth discussion uh, regarding that to find out where, where everyone is. So that, that's the challenge. We have four days where we can come together virtually with a quorum to make whatever decisions need to be made. So I, I Commissioner, I like the idea of, of revisiting the bylaws. I, I wonder if we have time to do that and then can come back together or I, I can certainly look at the bylaws today to determine if there are any changes that could be made that would be consistent with Sunshine. But um, preliminarily, I would say that we're, we're, we're quite limited with respect to the bylaws. Um, and this is based on the fact that um, the Sunshine Law does take precedence. So um, the quorum issue is something I, I, I will look at today and um, we'll get back to Martine um, as to uh, what uh, the options are. A quick question. Um, was it, Martine, can you tell us, was it even, like, was it even a close vote? Like, are we, like, one or two people away from being able to have that quorum, or was it literally, like, three people said they could make it and everybody else said no? It's probably you're about two people away from uh, having a quorum. 
Uh, and I will say one board member would not uh, reply to the survey, thought it was sort of an invasion of, of privacy. Uh, so we were very careful not to have, ask health questions or anything. We just, to your point, Megan, we didn't want to pressure people. We just wanted to find their level. Uh, and we didn't want too much information. And we certainly didn't want to be sharing information at the board meeting. So we were being very respectful of everyone's privacy. If we were to make the decision to cancel the next two meetings today, and then Charlotte comes back and we're able to to reduce the, redefine a quorum, and we could meet and approve that before the 31st, then we could we could go ahead and, and, and schedule a November and or December meeting, correct? I'm not trying to overcomplicate this, but. My, I have a question, CJ and Martine, is what business that we would need to vote on between now and, you know, in November and December. And I like the idea of what Santiago was proposing or what has uh, other organizations are doing is that if it's just informational, could we not continue doing it by Zoom? So there's a couple of questions there. And, and we know of no upcoming business between now and then. In in December, we'll be distributing the uh, the revised ordinance for your review that we'll discuss in January. But uh, there's no action that needs to be taken before January on that. So I mean, I'm okay with an informational, you know, just an update, um, and maybe that update just needs to be done in November, and we just skip like we usually do December, and then you know review whatever we need to vote on that, that would be happen in January. So I don't if we could keep it simple, but I guess that's what I'm looking for. So so you're recommending canceling the next two business meetings, turning those into informational meetings conducted by Zoom. That is co correct. Do I make other, that a motion? Other reactions to that? Me meanwhile Charlotte is going to do the the research and, and let us know where that what comes out of that. I second George's motion if it's a motion uh, that the next two meetings be uh, informational on purpose and not business. Okay. Any discussion? Well, and a lot may change by January. Well, maybe not a lot, but <laughs> things things may feel different by January. I keep thinking that. <laughs> and that would be informational. Yippee! <laughs> So we, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Martine, please call the roll. All. Uh, yes, in favor. Aaron. Yes. Santiago. Yes. Clay. Yes. D. Yes. Lindsay. Yes. Megan? Yes. Dontavius? Yes. Andra? Yes. CJ? Yes. Mariella? Yes. Sandra? Yes. And Eliza? Yes. Bob? Yes. Georgia? Yes. Okay. Unanimously passed. Great. Yay. Uh, next item, governance committee. The governance committee met on October the 23rd. And there are, yes, ma'am. If I could just make one last point. When we ever we do decide to get back together, I imagine there will be some point where we're still wearing masks and, and, and things. And I, I would just like, while we're all still here together, to make the point that if we agree on the rules, let's stick to the rules. I was just uh, virtually attending a hybrid uh, board meeting yesterday where the rules were everybody had to be masked and almost everybody took them off when they got in the room and got settled and, and spent a three and a half hour meeting talking at each other and coughing 
um, without masks. So uh, most of them without masks. So I was very glad I was participating virtually in that forum. So I just want to make that point that if we agree on the rules, let's stick to the rules for, for everybody's comfort, even if, um, you know, no matter what side you're on politically or whatever. Um, that's that's my comment. Thank you. Yeah, excellent point. And I would imagine uh, I have not been in county center, I think, since this all began, but I would imagine that the protocols are pretty strict and we would have to follow those. And uh, I'd recommend we we meet uh, without lunch so that we don't even have any excuses uh, uh, to unmask. So good. good. Um, Governance committee. The governance committee met on October the 23rd, and and Charlotte, if appropriate, there are actually three action items, but I'm I'm hopeful we can wrap all three of those into one, and vote uh, just for the sake of efficiency. Uh, the first thing is that we would need to approve the committee appointments, and you received a list of who's on what committee, and there were no significant changes there, with the exception of adding the two new board members, uh, placing them on committees. Then we voted to approve uh, Paul Berg as chair of the governance committee. Historically, the chair of the governance committee has been the vice chair. Uh, but that's just been a matter of practice. It's not spelled out that way in the laws. And so you all would need to approve that. And then finally, when we elected our officers for this year, we did not uh, elect a secretary treasurer because that is a position that we anticipate going away uh, once we're under the county. Uh, but uh, I think when we were recommending a slate of officers, we were thinking that that county move might happen in October. Now it's not going to happen until January. So that does take us through a quarter of the fiscal year. Uh, and, and we think we, we certainly need to have a, a secretary treasurer in place. So Theron uh, has agreed to serve in that role. And this is where Charlotte, if appropriate, could we bundle all three of these together and into, into one item for a vote? Um, it Yes, as long as um, it is clear that um, the votes are, well, I think what we need to find out is if anyone is planning to uh, have an adverse vote um, against any one of the issues. And if that's the case, then I recommend that they be done separately. Any, any concerns, any issues? Okay. So is there a motion to... I make a motion to approve the entire um, slate of all these offices as um, proposed in our backup. Is there a second? I second it. I second it. Any discussion? Martine, please call the roll. Can, can I check? Who seconded? Sandy. Sandra. Sandy. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes, I will. I will call the roll. Um, Paul? Uh, so I'm not sure if, since I'm on there as an individual and Theron is as well, do we need to recuse ourselves? Yes, you may, you may do that if you're not comfortable. Okay. okay. Is that what you want to yeah, say? Yeah, I'll, I'll recuse myself. Okay. And you, Theron? Yes, please recuse. Okay. Santiago? Yes. Play? Yes. D? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Megan? Megan? Yes. Yes. Octavius? Okay. Yes. Andra? Yes. CJ? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Sandra? Yes. And Eliza? Yes. Bob? Yes. Georgia? Yes. Oh, unanimous, except for the two recusal. Okay. Uh, next item. Transition to county government. I had a, a very good conversation with Ron Barton last week. Everything is moving forward, and we should have uh, a draft of the new ordinance for your review. 
And so please take a look at that in December when you receive it. And remember, uh, don't share any of your comments with me or any of the other board members. So direct those to Martine, and hopefully we can get that approved in, in January. And then finally, Chief Executive Evaluation. It is that time of year again. Uh, we are engaging uh, Brava Business, Alma Gonzalez, whom most of you know, who's conducted the reviews uh, in the past. She'll be distributing the survey in November, and we'll share the results of that survey, assumably at the January meeting. If we do have a December business meeting, we could share the results then. Uh, I do encourage you all to participate in that. I think that's a res an important responsibility for, for board members to participate in the the, uh, the CEO or executive director evaluation. So be on the lookout for that. That concludes my report, Martine. Yes, well, uh, we finished the fiscal year. We've been very busy closing out the grants, the 2020 grants and getting contracts out for 2021. We know this was a very unusual year. Uh, we really reached out to all of our 2020 grantees and tried to find ways to continue that they could still get the funding by taking their events virtually or doing something else. We had good success with that. We only had uh, uh, under the cultural development grants, only $4,198 was forfeited. Uh, there was one organization, Florida Wind Band, that just, they had, they struggled, but everybody else was paid pretty much 100%, which I think is almost remarkable given the year that we had. On the professional development for artists grants, uh, all of the funding less uh, other than about $900 was given to the artists. We had to change from being education uh, opportunities, sometimes to uh, equipment opportunities, but it all worked out. And the one artist that forfeited a very, very small amount, I think it was uh, like $600, she did that so she could apply again this year because once you get the award, you can't apply for three years. So she said, I'm just gonna wait and apply for 2000 next year. So we had a happy ending there. The Community Arts Impact Grant. Now this is much smaller organizations, all volunteer, nonprofits, not necessarily arts organizations. We did have five organizations there that did forfeit uh, completely. And then we had four that forfeited a portion of theirs. But wherever possible, we tried. Um, uh, one good example, Georgia is the firehouse. They couldn't do the event that the grant was for, but they had purchased some of the supplies for it. We were able to reimburse them for, for those supplies. We just couldn't, uh, uh, and this was very understandable. And Santiago, you told us about the situation in Temple Terrace. This was a very unusual situation. The uh, person with Temple Terrace Arts Council died very suddenly. And so we worked with another organizations to try and get in the receipts. We were successful. They were successfully reimbursed for their murals. Uh, this was a lot of extra effort this year to give the money away. You wouldn't think it'd be so hard to give money away, but we really didn't want people to give up if we, we could find a way to make them successful. So it was, I, I will say, I think the goodwill amongst our grantees and constituents, constituents went up exponentially during this pandemic because we did reach out and we went the extra mile and it would have been easier just to say, oh, you don't get your money. But we gave them ideas and Eileen worked, I, I commend Eileen. She reached out to the grantees in a very real way. So. Um, so we're, we're pleased that we ended, it, it is almost amazing we were able to do, give away as much money successfully as we were. Um, we are in contract mode with the Community Arts Impact Grant, which that grant for uh, this year starts uh, November 1st. So we got the last contract in today. We will be funneling those to CJ to sign the uh, cultural development grant contracts were went out and were all signed last month. 
We do have three organizations that also applied for the Cultural Assets Commission grant, and we are in a holding pattern with their contracts to see if they actually get more money from that grant because they can't take both. But we've got everything else signed, sealed, and delivered for a um, cultural development grant. Um, so we're already in the thick of 2021, and we have finished closing out 2020. And uh, I thought you all would be interested in, in knowing where all of that stood. Great. Any questions from our team? Okay. Uh, next. I I, CJ, I have a question for the board. So we have been meeting uh, on the fourth Tuesday at noon. I need to let the county know. So are we going to, with, it, uh, with the November and December meeting, will it be in light of the holidays, fourth Tuesday, or do we want to look for a different uh, meeting date? What's the, what's the preference? I'm pretty much okay with what we're doing currently, um, only because it's just already on the calendar for me. Okay, so just stay with, I just need to let the county government know so that they can uh, post this. So we'll go with the fourth Tuesday of the month at noon, if that's okay with everyone. What's the date of the fourth Tuesday in December? Uh, in December it is... The 22nd. Okay. Yes. Starts to get pretty close to the holidays, but everybody's good. Works for me. Okay. Just wanted okay. to clarify that so I can let the county know. All right. Great. Uh, next, Kelly Cavanaugh from Clifton Larson Allen is going to present our September financials and I think preliminary end of year. Kelly? Sure. Thanks, CJ. I don't know if everybody has it in front of them or if you want to pull it up on um, on the screen, if that, that matters. Um, but what I'll, what I'll start with is the first statement is the statement of net position or the balance sheet. And looking looking at this, um, really what's the, the most important component is looking at our cash and our net assets. Our cash is 472,000 is where we're ending the year, which actually is significantly up from last year by about $175,000. Um, this of course is a result of the fact that we had a net income for the year. We had budgeted net income of around $78,000 and ended up with net income um, slightly above that at 166,000. So our uh, uh, net position is really good. The only liability that went up with compensated instances, mostly a result of people just not taking PTO, but everything else status quo looks really good on the balance sheet. The next statement that you all have a copy of is um, the breakdown between what went into general versus programmatic expenses and revenue. So um, of the 580,000 that the county gave to us for youth provost programs and for admin support, we used about 375,000 of that for operations, 200 for programs. But like Martine said, um, we were able to give out a significant number of grants still this year, despite COVID, um, and $353,000 was given to grantees for this year. The only, on this the second statement, the only other really um, item of, of interest is looking at where we expended our funds for the year. And of the total budget, or the total amount spent this year, thousand six hundred and eighty was spent on programs so that's a pretty good ratio of about 75 percent that went into programs versus 25 percent into gna actually that's very very good so a positive sign there as well um, the other thing is looking at the actual to budget and there really were no known budget variances like martine said some of the grantees just weren't able to participate so a little bit less than what the grant funding uh we were able to you know pay grants out a little bit less than, than what the county uh, grant agreement allows for other than that there were no known over, over budget of significance and the areas where we were under budget were simply just some items that really 
couldn't transpire this year, some of the workshops and um, you know some of the publications which are currently on track, but they just didn't transpire um, at the time expected during this fiscal year. So again, we're ending the year with net income that is um, you know significantly above the budget, um, but a positive position. And one of the decisions I think that the board probably does need to discuss is whether or not to move some of that funding into reserves uh, at this point. And the other issue, something that we're gonna be working on with the county is whether or not to go through a formal audit. With the transition of leaving, uh, being an independent district and going back into the county, we, we technically we do need to have an audit, but it's the county funding that transpires as a result of having that audit or not. So I think that's a discussion that probably will come up in, in January. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Happy to answer. Nope. No questions. Okay, great. Okay, M Martine, do we need to approve the financial report? Um, we typically, we typically do. It would normally be on the consent agenda, and we would approve that with the minutes. But since we pulled it off for Kelly to give a year-end report, uh, I think we should. All right. Is there a motion to approve the year-end financial report? No motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Second. Martine, please call. First, Paul, you made the motion, correct? Yes. And who seconded? Okay. Mr. Smith. All right. Now I will call the roll for the vote. So. Paul? Yes. Aaron? Baron? I think maybe he left. Santiago? Yes. Clay? Yes. Lindsay? Yes. yes. D? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Megan? Yes. Montavious? Yes. Andra? Yes. CJ? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Anna Liza? Yes. Bob? Yes. Georgia? Yes. All right. Theron uh, had left, but every it was unanimous from all the board members that were made. So mo motion carries. We've covered a lot in a relatively short period of time. Any Anything else, any other business? Uh, yes, um, I need to report briefly on the Public Art Committee, believe it or not, the, the library uh, collection uh, and our public art that is in the library. During the pandemic, they have, we have been uh, in with taking inventory. Uh, and also, we have two meetings scheduled in November to uh, review the proposals for the Riverview Roundabout and the Board of County Commissioners uh, Library. I mean, excuse me, lobby. So we'll be meeting in November. Thank you. Great. Any other business or updates? All right. Uh, he hearing nothing, then, uh, Chris, thank you for your help as our host. I uh, hope everybody has a great rest of your week. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Bye.